would read here in verse numbers 38 to 42 verses 38 to 42 in Luke's gospel in chapters numbers 10 there is of course a very popular story here with uh, Jesus and um, we'll try to see if we could look in other places too to identify the characters in the story all right, we'll try to see if we can identify some of the other characters here that's in the story here from Luke's Gospel, chapters, numbers 10 and verse number 10. If you get it, you say amen, amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. I like that. That's the language of the church. Amen? amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says here, Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was encumbered about with uh, much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha. Thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary had chosen that good path, which shall not be taken away from her. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And Father, we thank you, God, for what you've done. And Lord, we just want to just exalt your name and uplift your name and glorify your name. Thank you, Lord, for everything. And Lord, may you bless your word to our hearts. I pray, God, may Christ be lifted up here today. Lord, may he be exalted, O oh God, and your word have its course. We love you, and we thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, in, uh, in our story here, with uh, Jesus, of course, uh, encountering a family, and um, as he encounters this, this family here, we would see that in three other places, Jesus, all, two other places rather, that Jesus had also encountered this family two times again. This time here was the first time that he met them. And according to the time when the months will fall, here is around about September, the ending of September going in to October. Uh, he would have met them here for the very first time. The very first time. Let's, let's be mindful of the fact that he's meeting them for the very first time. Mindful in the context, of course, that the first time you too would have encountered Jesus. The first time that we would have encountered Jesus. Amen? So we re remember that in that light. Then he would meet them again the second time. The second that we know it is the same family because the same uh, characters are there. But even if this story has several characters that is repeating, what I like about the Bible is that every story that you read in the Bible, the real protagonist or the real chief character of the story is always Jesus. Amen? There are people that does and did great things in those stories. Of stories, but none of them, of course, outdo or they are more important or they represent a greater ideal of value than Jesus. Amen? Amen. And that's why the Bible said there is no, listen, regardless as to the great men that are in the Bible, the prophets, John the Baptist, and you think about all those great men, but none of them, their names are able to bring salvation to us. None of them names are able to deliver people from hell. None of them names are able to see that demons be cast out of individuals. Excepting when you call on the name of Jesus. See? Excepting the name of Jesus. And so when he meets them the second time, of course, and he would meet them around December month. It would have been around December and again, we know that it would be the same set of people, the same set of family, same names, same individuals. All right? 
uh, Mary will occur again. Of course, the New Testament will give us at least about seven different Mary. But every time we turn, we would know that it is the very same Mary that we are referring to. And not another Mary, but it's the very same one. And then the last time Jesus meets them, it will be coming around the time of the Passover. In about the ending of March, going into April, by the end of March, he's going to meet them for the last time according to the Bible record. Amen? The, according to the Bible record. And again, they find themselves almost identically repeating their behavior, the way that they approach and they posture are pretty much like the same in every occasion. Amen? But again, Jesus remains the main character. Amen? I don't care what you do. I don't care what I do. But I tell you what, in my life, Jesus is the main character. We could get married. We could, uh, we could become wealthy. We could become poor. We could become homeless. We could be a person that has a lot of home and a lot of things. But still, Jesus still remains the chief character. She still has to remain. Regardless as to whatever state, Paul said, whatever state there and I am, I learn to be content. Amen? And so he must, listen, regardless of what we gain or what we lose, he must still be the chief character. Job said it like that in the Old Testament. He said, he said listen, uh, he, uh, the Lord gave, and the Lord take it away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. He must always be the chief of our lives. So let's see if we could get into a story here. And so a subject matter that we want to be able to speak on here is being at the feet of Jesus. As we can see in the story here in verse number 39, the Bible says, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. Amen? And heard his words. Now, as I said, that Mary, that's the first time that the family here is meeting. They're encountering Jesus for the very first time. For the very first time. And it is amazing to see that our very first point here is that the fact that she meets Jesus for the very first time, we see that she had a heart. And the heart that she had was a willing heart. She was willing. The Bible said and she heard Jesus. Well, she sat at his feet. He did not beg her to come and sit at his feet. Right? The Bible tells us here to confirm the willingness in verse number 42. In verse number 4, the Bible says, But one thing is needful, and Mary had what? Chosen that part. That is a sense of willingness. She is willing. So we see the willing heart of Mary. The willing heart of Mary. Now let's see if we can establish as to why she was so willing to do that. Why is it that she was so willing to come at his feet? Of course, according to uh, here, again in verse number 40, he said, one thing is needful. She had a need. And that is what I'm trying to say here. Her willing heart, of course, she had the willing heart because she had a need. She had a need. And remember, as I said, remember that this is the first time that that family is encountering Jesus. And I'm telling you that whenever you and I, at the point when we met Jesus, for the very first time, every one of us in this room here had a need. Once you meet Jesus for the first time, a need will be existing. As I think about it in Mary's need, I would imagine, obviously, meeting Jesus for the first time, she had a need of salvation. There was a need of salvation. Every person in this world that would have first time heard the gospel out of encountered Jesus is because they would have had the need of salvation. Amen. As a little boy, I stepped into that independent Baptist church there in Happy Hill. Just a little wooden building. It was just a 16 by 16 little boat house. And friend, I tell you what, listen. Some of the greatest sermon that I've heard had happened inside that building. I've seen people walk the aisle. I've seen people trust Christ as Lord and Savior. I've seen fun. I mean, I just we had. I mean, just fun time in that little building. They're just squeezing, trying to build a church, trying to grow it, trying to go out and witness and just do what we got to do for the honor and for the glory of God. And friend, I tell you, listen. From time to time, there were people that came in. And once they stepped in, it's because they had a need. Right. And that need was salvation. Right. But you know what? Mary, notice, 
that her need of salvation was not met by religious talk. Her need of salvation was not met because she listened to a television evangelist who is trying to get money out of her. Her need of salvation was met when she found herself at the feet of Jesus. And what I'm trying to say here tonight, this morning is this, that whatever our needs are, if you have a need, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you got that need of salvation, friend, that need can be met at the feet of Jesus. I would imagine... Not only that she would have a need of salvation, but I could imagine she'd have a need because she probably would have had a situation. Now, man that is born of a woman is but of a few days and full of troubles. Right. So he tells me that at one point or another, every one of us here will have situations. If you don't have it today, but your mind it probably will come up tomorrow or next week or you had it last week already. We'll all have situations where we sometimes figure, listen, if I only talk to someone, maybe it may make me feel better. If I only be able to get that done, maybe things would, you know, I would have a relief. But friend, Mary, her situations, whatever situation that she had, that need was met at the feet of Jesus. So whatever situation you are in, you, must, you and I must willingly go at the feet of Jesus and our situation will be met. I could think into the passage because the Bible says here I could imagine that Mary would obviously have certain situation. She probably maybe had some problems with her sister. It could have been problems with her sister. Maybe her sister pressured her. Maybe her sister didn't like her. Maybe, you know, it didn't have to be a sister, but maybe otherwise she could have had problems with, you know, with cousins, with other people, with people, are, you know, are, are around in the synagogue. She would have pro had problems in all, with men, with, in different areas. She probably would have had problems or uh, have situation. Because obviously, according to the fact that Jesus appearing, we would see here in that passage that obviously that she would have had some kind of situation. The Bible tells us here, verse 40, Martha said, verse 40 said, but Martha was encumbered about much serving. Right? And came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister had left me to serve? She specifically named and mention her sister. She probably said, man, every time people come, you just go and talk to them and you just leave me to do all the work. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like church, right? Yeah. I mean, just leave one, everybody have their fun time and they leave one set of people to do all the work. Yeah. Man, everybody jumped in their cars and everything, they're driving and somebody got to close them. Amen? Yeah. So somebody got to close up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> somebody got to do it. But I'm saying it may not be a problem for who's doing it. But in Martha's Mary's situation, she is probably think she's um, uh, Martha is having a problem with something, and then Jesus now had to respond and say, "Listen, one thing is really needful. All what you're doing that is not really needful. The main thing that's what every person in the church must keep the main thing, the main thing. Yeah. See, yeah. it's Jesus. That's what Jesus is saying. He said, "Listen, one thing is needful." Not wanting, but is needful. And Mary had willingly chosen that good path. She had willingly. So who knows? Mary probably had a situation with her sister. See? She probably had situations of all different types. But I praise God. She realized, listen, what if, if I have a... Listen, for years, my sister probably been putting pressure on me. For years, we probably had good relationship. For years, we probably had, probably had situations with other people and other circumstances surrounding me. But praise God, Jesus is in the house. And because he's in the house, I will be willing, I will willingly go before and bow down before his feet yes. that my situation can be relieved. Yeah, and I'm saying that whatever situation we have, be it salvation, yeah. and be, it, be you know, whatever is that situation, it can be lifted at the feet of Jesus. Yeah, it can be lifted at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. Let's turn to John's Gospel in chapters numbers 11. The 11th chapter of the Gospel of John. So we see here that needs are met 
at the feet of Jesus. Amen. It's met at the feet of Jesus. Uh, in Sunday school this morning, I was this morning I was remembering Pastor Doug making mention of you know just living by faith. Amen. And uh, you know because God knows everything. Amen. God knows everything. And I praise God for that. You know that you're able to just pray to God, and He's able to to meet needs. Amen. He's able to meet needs. And I heard him say, he said, uh, he said, I tell you what, God could touch a king of Norway's heart, and he could just send me money to build this church. Amen. And that is absolutely true. It is absolutely true. But the last time I was with a preacher down there in Alabama, and uh, he said to me uh, last year. And um, one of the things he mentioned, he said, I tell you what, he said, Brother Jeremy, when you go to them churches, you need to mention and say what you have to get. He said, because I tell you what, as much as God knows our need, he said, the Holy Spirit, he works on information too. Yeah, <laughs> he said, he works on information, you know? And, uh, but here in chapters 11, Jesus, here, from verse number 20, the Bible says here, He says, then Martha, let's take on verse 19. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. That's the second time that Jesus will encounter them. Yeah. The first time he meets them, Mary, Martha is serving, Mary is at his feet. Let's look. Verse number 20 said, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house then said Martha unto Jesus Lord if thou hast been here my brother hath not died but I know that even now whatsoever thou will ask of God God will give it to thee Jesus said unto her thy brother shall rise again Martha said unto him I know he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live Verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. She was a good Christian there. Verse 28. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister, secretly saying, The Master is come, and call it for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the tongue, but was in that place where Martha met him. Then Jesus, when, then, sorry, then the Jews, sorry, then which, the, the Jews, then which were with her in the house and comfort her. When they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed him, saying, he goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then, when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet. So, the first time she met Jesus, she found herself at his feet because she had a need. She was will, so she willingly, we saw her willing heart going at the feet of Jesus. Jesus said, Listen, she has chosen no one forced her. She chose that part. I thank God. That's what, that's what salvation is. When I trusted him, no one forced me. But I chose that path. Amen? Aren't you glad that it was your choice? Amen? That you chose. You beg. You say, Lord, save me. Willing. Amen? Then, so this time, her needs is met. Her needs is met. But look at the, look what the Bible says here. Saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Now we saw her willing heart the first time. Now we're going to see her weeping heart. Her heart, she's weeping. And <clears throat> she's weeping, of course, obviously, her brother is dead. And the death of her brother, the death of anyone that is close to us, brings a burden. Not so? It brings a burden. And I forgot to listen. Oftentimes, when things are good with us, sometimes we neglect the feet of Jesus. But I can guarantee you, 
that just about every human being, just about every Christian, as backslidden as they might be, when they are burdened, they know exactly where to go. So what does that say for the story? That tells me in the story, because when you read the whole chapter, you realize that Jesus made some deliberate moves. Some moves that you would have thought that he should not have made. If he was a concerned person, a concerned friend, that he would not have made those deliberate moves that caused him to delay his presence. But as he indicated to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Death, a headache, a, a, a cold, whatever the case, they are all the same. They are no different. See? They are no different to him. So raising the dead is no more difficult than healing the sick for Jesus. It is no, it's, no, it's the same thing. No, nothing is different. See? And healing the maimed, growing back legs and hands and stuff like that, as the Bible mentioned in the gospel. It sounds funny, but that's what the Bible says. It said the maimed came and Jesus healed them. So if he healed them, what does that mean? See? So here that Jesus... He made some deliberate move by holding back. So that tells me the fact that Mary's burden that she was having, the weeping heart that she was having, it was something that Jesus deliberately put on her. And may I say that oftentimes, sometimes the Lord puts deliberate burdens on us. Because when you check yourself, you may say, listen, man, I can't remember the last time I really prayed. I can't remember the last time that I really went and I speak with God and I weep and I really talk, you know, God really, I mean, every, I, I mean I, I'm good. Every, I have everything what I need. See? Yeah. I have everything what I need. Everything is good with me. Everything is good with me. But God put those burdens just so because he covets that we find ourselves at his feet. He left heaven and he comes down and he speaks to Adam and Eve in the cool of the day he wanted to have fellowship and God misses our fellowship when we're not praying when we're not meeting with him and communicating and having this intimate intimacy with him he misses that and he knows exactly how to get us there Sometimes we are so happy. Sometimes we too busy to pray. We so we going on. We doing so much. We are just moving on. But as soon as we have a burden, we can find the time to say, "Oh God," don't we? And so those burdens here are deliberate. But having said that, may I also say here, if that is the case, if God deliberately put burdens on us so that we can have some weeping heart, then I think what we should do is that we should ask God for burdens. We ought to ask God for burdens. Like what? For lost souls. If we are burdened for lost souls, we'll always be at his feet. We'll always be coming at his feet because something is burdening us. Hey, have a burden for the church. Yeah. 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 For your church. That God would burden your heart for the church and for the vision of the pastor. Of what he would want to say, Lord, help me to get a burden for that. So as a result of that, every time I fall on my knees, I would not overlook it. I would not see it as insignificant. I would not see the church or the preacher and his family and others and the workers. and uh, You know, I would not see those things as insignificant. But God, because it burdens me, I would always want to find myself at your feet. The truth about it is that you have to agree with me and say, you know what? I need a burden to always be at the feet of Jesus. I mean, we want our burdens to be lifted. Yes. Also? But sometimes we got to ask God for one so that we can always be at his feet to fulfill the gospel. Maybe you have a grandson, a granddaughter, maybe some kin, some mother, some father, some son, so whatever. And you say, Lord, they're not saved. Lord, burden my heart so that they would get to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Ask God to give you a burden for those things. Amen? 
Ask him to give you a burden. You say, I ain't got none, but you need to ask him. You need to ask him for a burden. Because the thing about it is that with a weeping heart, notice that Martha came to Jesus and she said, Master, if you had been here, my brother had not died. And, that, and, and she said, my brother had not died. And then she moves on. But Mary, with a weeping heart, her posture was different. She find herself at Jesus' feet. She noticed that Martha was on her way probably. She went and probably get some, if I could Americanize it, she probably went and get some grits, <laughs> gravy, biscuits, and of course she couldn't forget the sweet tea. Then she probably went and get those things. But, and Mary, she did the same thing. She find herself back at his feet. And she said the same words, only that she was just in a different place at the feet of Jesus weeping 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 for her brother and what do we know we know the story that Jesus went to the grave and he cries out Lazarus come forth and the Bible said he came forth what that tells me burdens can be lifted at the feet of Jesus so if you keep praying for that lost person if they become a burden for you if your church become a burden for you if the things that you, you're concerned about becomes a burden for you, like for me, Montreux is a burden for me to see souls get saved. I remember just before we go up there, one of the guys that sometimes comes around church, you know, he's hits and miss, you know what I mean? <clears throat> like that. He's like, one, he's like the person, like what I, I remember I heard Brother Joe Arthur said one time, there are two types of people that come to church. When you see them in church, you know something is wrong. And when you don't see them, you know something is wrong and that's pretty much fit his description and boy he told me he said listen he said pastor you're going up in Montreux I say yeah he said you're going to start a church I say yeah I say yeah well, that's what we're going to be doing and everything like that. he said man he said man that's a hard place he said man people in Montreux they don't want God and he thought he probably discouraged me but what he did is that he fueled me yeah he fueled me I was outside there by the truck and stuff like that. And as soon as he left and stuff, I mean, I, I went up in the church and I did that honestly. I went up in the church and I knelt there and I prayed and said, God, thank you. Yeah. Help me, Lord, as we go to Montreux. Yeah. You know, we do that. And that's before you came and the other church came. And I said, Lord, give us a harvest of souls. Yeah. May people come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Right. It is a hard place, but God, I'll tell you what, listen, that's what you want. Because you know what? When you dig the ground for nails, for the material to get nails, the harder the ground, the harder the, met, the, the stones and stuff is the stronger and better the nail. Amen? Yeah. And we want to be a nail in a show place. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And I say God, and while we go up there and God I mean just, God just did God just did things. For whatever, the building is shanty mail, of course, so you know to get the roof on. Hey, I tell you what, those things are burned to me and, and every day in my life I want to pray and say God, could you lift that burden? Just lift that burden because God is able. He is the burden lifter. If you have one, God can lift that. If you implant one in your life, get one in your life, get your life, be burdened with something, and eventually God will lift that burden. That son, that daughter, that person of yours who would want to see get saved, God will save them one day. Lift that burden. Amen? Then lastly, in chapters 11 of John, in John chapters numbers 11 Jesus meets them for the last time ending of March into April he meets them again we, we see in verse numbers 1 the Bible says now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany in the tongue of Mary and her sister Martha it was that Mary which anointed the, the Lord with the ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. I thank God when the Bible makes it clear. Amen? So we see we are here back in the tongue again and he's going to encounter the same people for the third time within a nine month period. He's encountering them yet again. And we know it is, it is them because he, he outlines it. All right? <clears throat> 
Then the Bible says in verse number three, it says that therefore his sister sent, on, sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard, uh, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not, uh, I'm sorry, uh, chapters 12. I'm sorry, not, not chapters, chapters number 12. Chapters number 12. I realized I was going back to the same thing here again. Chapters number 12. I'm sorry. Verse, verse numbers 1. Meets them for the third and final time. The Bible says here, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper. And Martha, what she do again? She served. She's taking up the same position. Same position. Right? But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pong of ointment of the spikened very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus. She's there at his feet yet another time. Yet another time she finds herself at his feet. And the Bible says, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of the disciples, Judas, uh, his Judas is carried, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had, a, had the bag and bear what was put therein. Now, for the final time, Mary takes up the same position. And Martha, she's there, and the Bible says that she served. She's there serving. She's doing what she's doing all the time. Praise God for people who want to work and do all of that in the church. Glory to God for that. Amen? You need workers. But Mary always seems to take up that intimate position where she wants to draw closer to the Lord. Amen? She just wants to draw closer to him and wants to be at his feet. So now she went at his feet willingly. She had a need, that need was met. Salvation, she get that need met. She went at his feet with a weeping heart because she was burdened. That burden was lifted. Lazarus was raised from the dead. She was happy all again. God is able. Now, if my need is met, Pastor Doug, my burdens are lifted. Why would I want to go to the feet of Jesus? For what? Yeah, think about it. Good. Think about it. Why am I going there again? What, what else could you want? Yeah. What could be the reason for going there? Yeah. This time, she didn't have a willing heart. It was not about a willing heart. It was not about a weeping heart. But it was about a worshiping heart. Yeah. And the worship here is because of the fact that she loved the Lord. Yeah. I believe that we ought to have people that will be willing to come onto the altar not because you have a need. Right. Not because you have a burden, but just because you love him. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in churches we need to make more trips from our seat just because we love him. Nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with us. Nothing that we're supposed to want. Nothing. It is not about us. But we make that trip because of him. Just because of him. Lord, I'm going to make that trip just because I love you. I want to worship you. That you come this morning, not because you would have to do with the Sunday school, not because you'd have to give an announcement, not because you would see a friend, but just because I love him. Amen. We need to do more for the Lord just because we love him. Amen. See? Just because we love him. And could it be that we have a need, we have a burden, but we're going to still put those things aside. Our concerns will be put aside and say, you know what? Today is all about him. Lord, you know my burdens, you know my needs. But Lord, I'm going to come down here just because of him. When last have we done things just because of him? 
He's the center of the focus. It's all about him. Everything is supposed to be about him. But for some reason, we make it about us. Always about us. Well, I have that problem. This is what is going on with me. And it becomes, a pastor, listen, this is what, hey, preacher, I'll tell you what, listen, I love the Lord. I just came in your office, I just called you today to let you know that I love the Lord. Yeah, I didn't have a burden, I didn't have a problem, or I had one. I don't even want to talk about my burdens, I don't want to talk about my problems, but all I want to just tell you, I love the Lord. Can we make it more about him? Shouldn't we make it more about him? Because that's what, he's the one who saved us. We didn't save him. Eh? As a matter of fact, we would, have, we would have run from him going on the cross because we are afraid that we were going to lose our lives. It is time that we begin to keep focusing on him. Because friend, I tell you what, when you get to heaven, guess who you'll be seeing? Not you, but you'll be seeing him, that bright and morning star. The light. Man that gives light to everything. The sun is not there because he is the light thereof. Yeah. It is all about yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Let the text prove to us that it was something to do. Mary is because of love. The Bible said that Judas had the bag. And Judas mentioned and Judas said, listen, why wasn't this ointment sold for 300 pence of the speaking? It? He knew the cost. He's a thief. And you know that thieves didn't know the cost of everything. Yeah, they do. Think about it. I mean, they know the cost of everything. <laughs> he knew that this thing, because the material that was made for it, he said that some of the material here is made, it came from the way up in the Himalayas. Oh. The plants to make that perfume, to make that speak in it, and other. I mean, it just came from different places, so it was very expensive. All of these things were not grown locally. They had to get this from different places to put it together to give you that speak in it, that, that sweet odor. And Judah said, why wasn't it sold for 300 pence? Now, if it is sold for 300 pence, the average day's work was one pence. So you know what is happening? What is happening that Mary, she's, she loved the Lord so much. She's so much willing to worship him with her offering and everything that she took the value of one year worth of work and she didn't put it in the bank. She put it at the feet yeah. of Jesus. The value of one year worth of work, it went at the feet of Jesus. She was not afraid to do it. You know why? If he could meet my need, if he could lift my burden, why not? Why not? Why not? Doesn't he deserve it? In Revelation, when he says he's worthy of praise and honor and glory, it means it. Why not? If he was able to meet my need of salvation, takes me out from a sinner, make me to a saint, I'm on my way to heaven. I'm here, but I'm already sitting in heavenly places right. with Christ Jesus. Right. I mean, I tell you what, God saved my children. He saved this. He, I mean, he helped me. And God, he was able to meet my needs, keep me safe. I mean, God just, I mean, he's just all over me. Put me in a good church where I can hear the preaching. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, why, not? Yeah. why not? And Mary said, I don't care what is happening. I don't care what people think. But whatever I have goes to Jesus. If you love him today, Amen. why not find yourself at his feet yes. just because you love him? Yes. Father, we love you. We thank you. We pray, God, may your word reach home to our hearts and God, may you help us. Strengthen us, Lord. Yes. Oh, God, may you bless the rest of the service, the invitation. Lord, those who come to the altar, I pray, God, may you help us to learn from Mary. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.